Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a realtor located in central New Jersey. You know, we're going through a lot of uncertain times and I have several clients right now that are asking me, what effect is this all gonna have on my ability to purchase a home? Maybe they're currently in process to purchase a home or maybe that was in their plans for this year and they're just trying to figure out Am I still going to be able to do that? So I sat down with one of my favorite lenders, Mike Aldi from Loan Depot. He's going to be talking about what effects this all has on the current mortgage industry, what's going on as a result of all the uncertainty around this pandemic and how long it's going to last, and what some banks and lenders are doing to help protect themselves and weather the storm. Hi, Mike. Thanks for joining me again. Hey, thanks for having me. It was good to be here. I appreciate it. And both from the comfort of our homes. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. It's a new world. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Mike, we're in really uncertain times, right? Right now with everything with the pandemic, we have no idea how long it's going to last. We've got people getting laid off from their jobs. The stock market has fluctuated quite a bit. What effect has all of this had on the mortgage industry? Yeah, um, it, it's it's had quite, a, quite an effect indeed. A lot of pieces, you know, kind of floating around with this, but you know, when the Fed basically stepped up and, and what they thought, you know, they were doing was helping the industry ultimately ended up really kind of putting lenders in a really bad position. So they came in and they decided, OK, we're going to if you remember QE from from you know several years back, right, they're buying these mortgage backed securities, which the mortgage backed security is basically a, a, a slice of mortgage loans right there. Mm -hmm. When when a loan is is closed. It's sold uh, to like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginnie Mae. They bundle those loans up. They send them to an investment banker and they create these mortgage-backed securities, which are basically bundled loans, and they sell them to the public. So you're basically buying a piece of the pie, right, mm -hmm. in the form of a security or a stock. When they came in, they basically bought upwards of $200 billion um, in these mortgage-backed securities, thinking, okay, that's, that's going to keep mortgage rates down, it's going to help people be able to refinance, you know, maybe help lenders, this and that. But what ultimately ended up happening is that it pressured rates to drop so fast, lenders from a, for a variety of different reasons, they couldn't handle this. So we're, we're already in a refinance boom, which we were faced with major capacity issues, both from a, a human resources standpoint um, and from a, a liquidity standpoint. Mm -hmm financial standpoint. And now you you couple this with these rates being pressured even lower. So a bunch of different things started happening now. You had loan refinance loans that were already in process. Now people are breaking their locks and calling other lenders mm -hmm. to see if, if they can get a better rate. If this is hurting lender, we'll call it lender A. Now they're going to lender B. Lender A is in trouble now. So what happens is Kind of give you a high level here. So when you apply for the mortgage and they and the lender locks the interest rate, they basically hedge the bet against mm -hmm. rising interest rates. Mm -hmm. In the normal market, this works wonderfully well. Um, they'll lock you, you know, wherever that rate is. They they'll they'll buy the instrument for the security to hedge against the, the rising rate there. When the Fed came in and bought these mortgage-backed securities and basically forced rates down, now you created an upheaval. So these, these short positions that they took to protect themselves are now upside down. And the investment banker is calling the lender saying, basically calling the margin call here, right? Saying, hey, your investment here is upside down. We need some cash from you now. So this created like mass hysteria almost. Yeah, that doesn't sound like it's a really good thing. <laughs> yeah, not a good thing at all. But the Fed, you know, they didn't realize this as they were in their infinite wisdom trying to help the scenario. So essentially what you're saying by helping, they're ultimately hurting. Hurt, ultimately hurting. So you had the Mortgage Bankers Association basically screaming and the mm -hmm. Fed finally heard it. So they slowed down the purchase of these mortgage-backed securities, which will be a good thing. And then the longer they do slow it down, basically the lenders need time to be able to get these loans through the process, mm -hmm. get them off their books, you know, sell them so they can free up their warehouse lines so that they can make more loans. Enter the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Now we have a whole different variable here that's creating more panic. You have unemployment that's going to start to rise. You, you saw it the other day, um, mm -hmm. upwards of 8 million now, I think. And you have all these loans in process now with a risk that they might not be able to close because the borrower lost the job, mm -hmm. right? 
So th this is a problem. You have, um, if you're working from home, we can still get that done, you know, verify the employment. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a problem. But if you're laid off or furloughed, anything like that, can't we can't close the loan or verify employment until you're back at work. Hopefully everybody does get back to work in time. And so then what you're saying is if you're currently in process and you lose your your job, or even if it's a temporary loss of employment, your purchase can't go through. You either have to cancel it or you have to put everything on pause to right. hopefully get back to work, which makes sense because if you're not working, you're not making any money, what sort of security would the bank have that you're actually going to pay your mortgage? Exactly. And, and this creates fear um, in, the, in the market as well for investors. So, you know, normally, you know, investors would buy these mortgage-backed securities as well, but now they're, look, they're treating them like junk bonds almost because there's no guarantee that these, these securities will, will perform well, right? Meaning, um, you know, we could see, you know, what they call first payment default, like the loan closes and now you're gonna make your first payment. They defaulted because they're out of work. Mm -hmm. right? So this creates a whole other issue in the industry and in the market. So here's a question for you based on everything you just said. I know a lot of people out there, they hear the word recession and they immediately think back to, you know, the housing crash in 2008. And there's a lot of debate out there, you know, on the news and everything you read that this is not a housing crash that we would experience. Um, and you're talking about all these mortgage-backed securities and being junk bonds and that sort of thing. Um, so to put some people's mind at ease, I mean, is that something that we're looking, could we looking at another housing crash because of all of this? I, I don't think it will see it in, in the form that we did in 2008. It's a very different scenario, one that, you know, we've never seen before. We just need the kind of the, from a lending perspective, we need the flexibility to be able to weather this storm. And as long as we're able to, to get through it, and, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, programs being suspended or different things like that, you know, that's lenders trying to, you know, kind of maneuver through this and figure out the best way for them to get point A to point B through this crisis until we kind of get through to the other side. I think, you know, hopefully the, the, that window, it, it's not too far out, but, you know, lenders across the board have to be able to manage through this and, think, you know, and at the end of it, we'll all, it'll all be for the better, for sure. I don't think we're going to see anything like we, we saw in 2008 in terms of yeah, I would agree with you, too. I don't think so either. I think the fact that, you know, even our government is stepping in and discussing things with big lenders like forbearance and loan forgiveness and these sort of things. I think that they're recognizing that we are going into a tough time as a country and they're trying to stop, you know, the mass foreclosures, the mass short sales, the mass sort of liquidation that we saw back in 2008, which is what caused the housing you know, crash. So I, I agree with you. I don't think we're going to see the same thing. And mm -hmm. I have seen um, you know, some lenders tighten their belt. And that actually brings me to my last question is because of all the uncertainty, you know, I know lenders that have made some changes to some of their loan programs and made them actually a little bit more strict and, you know, tougher for buyers to get in. I'm assuming that's ultimately to weed out any of the risky buyers and really close on the loans on the more secure buyers. And I was just wondering, can you go through maybe what some of those loan program changes are? Sure. So have... Lenders are tightening from a few different standpoints, right? And and it's one to back to that capacity issue, to control the volume coming in, um, and then manage the risk, to, you know, to kind of to mitigate that. This is going to vary across the industry. Each each lender is going to take different positions, um, and it's really just comes down to what's their exposure at the end of the day, how much risk they need to mitigate. So you'll hear FHA, for instance, um, on a purchase, minimum credit score, you know, might range from 620. Some lenders might be up to 680. You'll hear there's probably some brokers out there saying that they can still do the 580 or lower. It might still happen for, for a period, depending on, on who the, the lender is um, that would be backing that. Again, it all comes down to how much risk or what's their exposure to a product like that. I can also tell you it would not be cheap at all to, to, to do something like that. Bar would certainly pay through the nose. Uh, VA, going to be treated the same way. Both, both the government products on the purchase, those credit score requirements are going to increase. Uh, from a refinance perspective, lenders are going to approach it as, okay, did I originate the, the, the first loan? Or am I refinancing somebody else's loan? FHA and VA both have what they call a streamlined refinance program. It's the closest thing to a no-doc loan. There's no appraisal. 
nothing like that. Most lenders will approach it as, okay, if, if I didn't originate the first loan, well, now I'm going to require some type of valuation property hmm. and I'm not going to lend past, you know, X LTV. Maybe that's 80 or 90, whatever that looks like. Again, each lender is going to have their own, their own rules to be able to weather the storm. Right. So it's just the government back loans that are really having changes, right? Because that makes sense. It's the government. They're trying to protect against a recession, things like that. The jumbo market is also taking a little bit of a hit. You have, you know, so lenders that act in a, in a what they call correspondent capacity um, where they're automatically selling, they'll originate the loan and sell it right back to the investor, whether that's the Bank of America, Chase, Wells, all the big players. They, the, the big banks, have for the most part, kind of cut that off for now. A lot of their, they're, they're not doing, you know, those jumbo products, whether you were, you were able to underwrite them or whether the investor, the bank had to, had to underwrite them. Um, a lot of those are kind of curtailing those for now and suspending them um, until they weather the storm because jumbo space, they keep that on their books, right? Mm -hmm. So they need to worry about liquidity as well through this, through this period. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Well, I was going to say, it sounds like everything you're saying in terms of the loan changes and things slowing down. And um, it sounds like with everything going on, everybody's being a little bit extra cautious this time around right? To make sure, like you had mentioned earlier, we can weather the storm, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, you know, we, we learned some great lessons back in 08 and, you know, Dodd-Frank did put a lot of new rules in place, which the Fed had loosened up on some of those um, actually back around the third quarter of last year, mm -hmm. helped banks, you know, kind of free up a little more liquidity to kind of weather storms. Um, and that's definitely helping here. Um, in this scenario, to, to the point, everybody needs to be overly cautious. And as, as we manage, manage through this, limit the volume of new loans coming in, help us get these loans that are on the books now off the books, we can be freed up to start making new loans. You know, now we have the, the spring market, which is obviously delayed. Yes. Uh, Usually it's super busy. We're maybe a summer we're market. Dead. Usually we're really busy. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's right. definitely slowed down. I mean, like I had mentioned to all of my um, followers on my social media on Friday, things are still happening, right? People are still buying and selling. People do still have to move, but it has definitely slowed down. Actually, the numbers for Woodbridge this week were back what they were kind of in December, like over the winter right. months. Um, and I think that all the people that can hang tight. You know, I, I believe that once this is all over, we'll have a huge influx of inventory onto the market. The people that are sort of pausing right now right. and then coming on when this is all said and done and everything sort of the dust settles. I think we're going to have, you know, an influx. I, I actually messaged to a client. I think we're going to have a really strong summer. I would agree. So that brings me back to really one last question I have for you. What advice would you give somebody um, who is either currently in process or was about to start the process to purchase a home and they would have to get financing? Right now, given everything that's going on, what advice would you give them? Well, um, my first question to them would be around the job. You know, what, what, what's the employment situation look like? Mm -hmm. If they are currently laid off and they know they're going to get that job back um, once things loosen up, I would probably start the process. Uh, we wouldn't be able to lock the rate because we wouldn't know how long we need it. You know, when, when would we be able to close? We don't know that. But if it's a scenario where they've lost their job and there's no guarantee that they're going to get it back, then I, I would say you'd probably have to sit tight um, and wait until we get through this and then you've you find new employment. And if somebody is able to work from home and continue to work and earn income, then they can move forward, right? Absolutely. Yep. We're, we're business as usual in a scenario like that. That's no problem. Can those 30 days on a purchase. Yeah, we'll, we'll make that happen for sure. Got it. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I really appreciate it. You, share, um, you shared some really fantastic information with all our viewers out there. And thank you. My so pleasure. Much. My pleasure. Yeah. If anyone has any questions, they can reach me through my website, um, which is homeloansbymikealdy.com. Mm -hmm. um, there's a message in there and it'll shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer. Great. And I'll put a link to your website down in the description box below so that people can head down there. They can contact you directly if they have any questions or if they want to start the process of purchasing a home. Great. Appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much and stay safe. You as well. Take care now. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. 
you know, my goal is to make the content you're looking for. So if you have an idea for a future video, leave it in the comments section below. And if you haven't already done so, consider hitting that subscribe button below and the bell so you don't miss the new videos I release every week. I hope everybody's staying safe out there and I'll see you next week.